Welcome to Art by Travis. Today I'm going to do a little demonstration with my Derwent ink tents. This is what I'm showing you now. These are ink tents blocks, a set of 24. Come in enough colors. It's good enough. And these are pencils, which are basically the same thing. They're just in pencil form. Here's the uh, display of the, the box of the blocks. That's what it comes in. And then now the pencils. So like I said, they're, they're basically the same thing. Not basically, they are the same thing. You can literally paint right off of the pencil. But you can apply these to the pencil directly or to the paper directly with the pencil. Or you could use your paintbrush to take a little water and just take it, the, the pigment off of the pencils themselves. But that's why I have the blocks. I only use the pencils for just uh, uh, fine details. This is just a water pen. I use that a lot, but you'll see me use brushes as well. Now we're going to head into this full speed. I'm just getting a base color down so the browns that I lay over the top of it will maintain like a golden look to it. And you'll see as I go along my process. But that's basically it. These ink tints are wonderful. I love them. They act different than watercolor because they're permanent. But in a sense they're the same is using watercolor. You have to base some of the same principles. Yeah. Flow and things like that, but it's a little bit easier to layer over something that you've already painted with these. That's why I like them. But once you're committed, you're basically committed because it's permanent. This is the liner brush I'm talking about. <clears throat> Very fine lines with it. You gotta be careful with how much water you have on the brush though. I'm mainly just getting where I know that there's gonna be a dark line. That's what I will use this brush for and or fur, things like that, but with this, rather than like with watercolor, you can lay down darks and then paint over the top of it and you're still going to see the dark through it. Whereas in watercolor, once you add water to it, it's basically going to lift it up for the most part. So that's the big difference. Here I'm using the water pen again. I'm just making some shade on this side of the face. I'm building up my dark. Rather than going straight in, I'm just building it. Basically getting where I know it's going to be. That's how I had it sketched out. So you can see that it's still quite yellow. That's because I'm mixing progressively more and more uh, light brown into it, like a sienna. The light's coming from uh, the left side there. So the highlights are going to be on the top of the head and the shadows will be on the right. And this is all just layering. See how that brown now stays uh, it's got a little bit more of a golden color because of that yellow base layer that I have going on there. The paper that I'm using is Arches. Uh, 140 pound hot press. I like hot press paper. It's a little bit smoother. I don't often use the cold press. 
Arches is not also my favorite paper. I have, when I do a little bit more serious drawings or paintings, I will use uh, Paul Rubens in a block. Here you see I don't even have it taped down. This is more or less a, a, a demo. I won't say it's not a serious drawing because I put a little bit of time into it. I don't just like making garbage, but I meant this more as, as a demonstration of what ink tints will do and something that as I explore making these videos and see how far I can push the time limits. In all reality, this took like two and a half hours to do and then condensed it down to, to 20 minutes so I haven't made a whole lot of pictures with the ink tints usually my thing is charcoal or graphite uh, but I'm doing more and more of these I, I, I start uh, loving it more the more I deal with it but it's still a process of learning it's always learning not only learning certain values, but learning colors and how to mix colors. Because I'm working off the 24 set. You know, obviously you can make any color from just your primary colors, but I like a little bit. There I made a little bit, a little bit of a mistake. And you see that once it's there, it's there. I even tried to wash it off, but I knew that I'm going to keep going darker. So that's going to just blend in and I need the mark there anyway so I'm not worried about it getting completely lifted off if I needed it to be completely lifted off what I would have to do is then add white which is a good advantage of ink tints the white you can layer over the top of it and then basically start over again that's not something you can do with watercolor watercolor though that you could just lift it off that's the here instead of using white I mean just leaving the paper white as you would do in what with watercolor because that's a lot easier the white the pure white paper looks better and it takes a lot less work I'm just adding some fine details where I know need to go I'm not too worried about it at this point because I still got to do the background, so I'm more concentrated. The inner details, though, I'm putting things there so I can see how it's going to look because I have never done this before, not on, not in uh, color, and certainly not with ink tints, not even with watercolor. So this is the first time, but I feel confident enough with it that. It, I do enough of these that I know they're going to turn out somewhat decent. And if it doesn't, well then I just won't make the video of it. And I'll just start over again. But this was the first time through. As always, it's a learning process. You see the brown is a nice golden brown now. The main is kind of challenging because of the darks and the lights mixing together. You have to kind of strategically plan that. You see me bouncing around a lot. It's because I am allowing the uh, certain areas to dry from the water. You see the, the paper buckles a little bit when you're doing it like this, but I'm not adding big washes to it, so it'll straighten out. If I was washing the whole thing, from top to bottom, I would have it taped down so it wouldn't do this so bad. But this little bit of buckling is not, it's not a big deal. Once it dries, it goes right back to being flat. Got my liner brush back out. They're not real expensive brushes that I'm using here, so you don't have to get all caught up into the materials and such you can start out with just the basics it's, it's kind of the reason why these are cheap brushes so the water brush is 
why I like that is because when I said it, it holds water better. If I had better brushes, you know, that they would hold water better. But these are synthetic hair, so they don't hold water quite as good. So the water brush is a good substitute for that because and even then I still dip that in water, but I use the water that's in the, the water brush itself to kind of supplement that. That way I'm not having to dip so often. But with my other brushes, it's like you put a little bit on and then you dip it more, dip it, dip it, dip it. You're spending a lot of time dipping. At least I am anyway. Here I'm filling in more of the shadow side, getting it a little bit more brown. Just layers upon layers. One of these days I'll invest in an expensive set, but it, it's not you know necessary. Obviously, because you can paint, you don't need to have a hundred dollar brush to be able to do stuff. You just have to work through the um, the shortcomings of the whatever brush or material that you're working with. Most of the drawings that I do are with the, about the cheapest material possible, which is charcoal. And I even get my charcoal stuff from the Chinese, where it's mega cheap. So I think it. I have uh, charcoal that I paid like $10. It'll probably last for you know, years because there's so much of it, both willow and. Uh, uh, woodless pencils. More and more brown. It's a light brown. I'm going back and forth between a light brown and a little bit darker brown. One's like a sienna-ish type. It's One's called willow in this set and the other one's called bark which will give you basically what the namesake is uh, kind of telling you that it is. It's more of, the, of a bark color, which is a little bit darker, and the willow is like a lighter, which is what I'm using mostly here. And over the yellow, it gives a nice golden tan color there of the lion. You can go, since I didn't tape it down, there's a reason why I didn't do the background first. But I have, as you see, I have the main kind of like framed out. It's not super detailed, especially at the ends, because what I'm going to do in a few you'll see is I'll add, I'll start putting the background. I wouldn't normally do that. But like I said, it was the first time I was going through here and I wasn't sure how it was going to look to begin with. So I kind of just held off on the background. You can do it. It's, it's just how you feel comfortable doing it. I feel comfortable being able to make the black background blend into my drawing in the foreground because I've done it before. I've done it both ways. It just depends on how it is I'm approaching it and how detailed the background actually is. The background is going to be mega detailed then yeah, obviously I'll do that first, but what I want is more of a like a blurred look to the background. So it's just gonna be a couple tones. So we can go ahead and put that in later and then just draw the mane and the hair over the top of it that it looks more like it's blending in to the background. As you see, we've lost all of the uh, the yellow for the most part. It doesn't see this. And the good thing with this ink tint, like I said, like the uh, which is different than the watercolor here, is that it's not going to completely cover up. If I go over the hair, it's not going to completely cover it up. So all I have to do is just go right back over it again with the 
with the lighter colors so you can just make it blend right in and fill in any areas that you might have missed. It doesn't have to be really exact. It's the beauty of watercolor. I'm just getting basically a, a contrast between a, a dark, you know, where the background is like the line is sitting below the horizon line there with its head just peeking up and then it's fading into the darker the background like that. We'll get a better blend going on. But this is it doesn't I don't want it to be super yellow like it's turning out like right here but as it dries it'll change color a little bit once you paint with this medium for a while you'll understand its behavior and how it does certain things but I'm basically just laying a base under here for the green greenish I wanted to emulate like a blurred background of grasses and and things like that like the lanes lines laying down in grasses and but I don't want the focus being on the background, so I want it to be on the lion itself. Here I'm adding just a little bit more detail into the mane. I don't want to get too carried away, because that's not really the purpose of this. To spend a whole day drawing this like I normally would and making it look super realistic. It's mainly just a quick demo of what you can do with these, even in a short period of time take it a step past a black and white drawing. Light fastness of these things, I'm not... I know that some of them are light fast, but I don't know if it has to do with the water. I'm not selling this, so I'm not really too worried about it. But I know if people are concerned about light fastness, then just check on their website because I know they're always improving. They're made by Derwent, which I love just about anything that they put out. Except for their charcoal pencils. Not really a big fan. I use a word the woods charcoal pencils. The charcoal pencils that I have from them are very fragile. The lead falls out of them. And I prefer the the woodless ones because you can when you sharpen it you have a for shading and things like that, it's wider. You see the hair goes right over that background. Uh, you can just paint. Now I can start painting a little bit more detailed on the outside because I've got the background meeting. Dog barking. Just a little bit more Start with the bigger brush, go to the smaller one for little details, obviously. I don't think you have to be told about that. Just depends on how realistic you want to get. If I was trying to make this look ultra realistic, this would be probably one day one of two or three days that I would spend on something like this, getting it. And I would have spent a lot more time on the initial sketch as well to make sure that I had everything, but it was fine the way it was. You just kind of have a have to have a plan, like especially on the background, like how you see me doing here. I knew that I wanted this to blend in and kind of have a blurred look right here. So I'm kind of using a little bit more of a bluish color then to blend into the black from the yellow. So it helps with the green along a little bit and here's just like suggestions of grasses and plants and stuff like that. I don't want it hard lines and they're just suggestions. I don't want it like I said to to draw attention away necessarily. It's just something there to add to the overall picture but not be the focus and not just be a solid background. Here you see I'm using the pencils. They react different whether the paper is wet, which it was up top where I just went over there. And you can lay down the pigment then with the pencils and then I can you can go over it with the water brush like you see me doing here. You know, the reason why I don't do that in the beginning is because it, it it's kind of grainy and it kind of sticks to it. It doesn't dissolve all the way 
rather than if you just paint with it like you would normal then you don't have any grains or anything in there and then, then that's not a problem I'm just uh, filling in this extra part here we're about wrapping it up sign it and be done with it but uh, if you enjoyed this like and subscribe hit that notification bell everything helps and I'll see you right back here the next time Art by Travis.